Let's talk about some dashboards. So for your data journalism piece, you're going to want to create an interactive dashboard for your readers to accompany your writing. Um, so, well, we should spend some time talking about dashboards and what the heck they are. And then I'm going to show you how to create one in Tableau. Um, this video you are going to want to keep very handy uh, to help you with your final project. So what the heck is the dashboard? A dashboard is an information management tool that visually tracks, analyzes, and displays key performance indicators, also known as KPI, metrics, and key data points to monitor the health of a business, department, or specific process. So essentially, it's a way to display your data, and many times the data is connected to live feeds so that the data can be displayed. Almost picture it like a, a computer screen or a window where a user can just watch the dashboard as the data changes and get all the information that they need. So they are customizable to meet specific needs of a department and a company. Behind the scenes, a dashboard connects to your files, attachments, services, and APIs, but on the surface displays all the data in the forms of tables, line charts, bar charts, and gauges. A data dashboard is the most efficient way to track multiple data sources because it provides a central location for businesses to monitor and analyze performance. Real-time monitoring reduces the hours of analyzing and long line of communication that previously challenged businesses. So we've played around with Tableau and we've created a single display um, a graph of our choosing, but now we're going to spend some time creating multiple graphs and how to place them onto a dashboard and make it look nice. Um, and you'll see as we go through this video and I do the Tableau part, how customizable dashboards really are um, to really focus and fit your dashboard into your story so that your user is really um, emerged into your story. Like they're, they're, they feel like they're in your story, which is really what we want with a live data journalism piece. Now, how do dashboards work? So a dashboard is dependent on the role it plays within an organization. Everyone uses data dashboards differently and not all business dashboards serve the same purpose, which is why it's important that we understand what key factors to track and why we're tracking them. So let's consider the following questions. What kinds of business questions do dashboards answer? What type of data are tracked on dashboards and how are dashboards interactive? So dashboards are fueled by business questions. Really, data analysis is fueled by questions. When we start with data, we typically have some sort of initial question in mind that we are planning on answering. And hence our um, desire to dive into the data to see if we can find an answer to that question. So the best data dashboards answer important questions about your business or about the area in which the data comes from that you want to talk about. Unlike advanced business intelligence tools, dashboards are designed for quick analysis and informational awareness. They're also extremely easy for your users to view and to use, which is why they are used by many data scientists in order to get their information easily um, displayed to stockholders, CEOs, people that may not be as tech inclined. The most common approach to designing a business dashboard is to build it using a question answer format. So some examples of questions that a business may come up with in order to design their dashboard. What's a, our quick ratio? Where is our quick, quick ratio compared to where it should be? Maybe you want to ask the question, how many calls has the call center done this week? Was it more or less than last week? Uh, maybe we're focused on what are the top five products in a sales revenue and where are their opportunities and so on. So again, you are focused on a specific question that maybe you are trying to answer in a presentation and you build your dashboard with specific data points in order to help you 
um, tell your story to your audience. Dashboards can focus on presenting operational and analytical data. So the business questions on a dashboard answers um, depend on industry department process and position. Analytical dashboards are typically designed to help decision makers, executives, and senior leaders establish targets, set goals, and understand why and what something happened with the same information they can use to implement appropriate changes. An analytical dashboard does this based on insights from data collected over a period of time determined by the user, which you will see as we do our Tableau portion of this video. Dashboards present interactive data visualizations. So a data, visual, data is visualized on a dashboard as tables, line charts, bar charts, and gauges so that the user can track the health of their business against benchmarks and goals. The data dashboards surface uh, the necessary data to understand, monitor, and improve your business through visual representations, while also taking out all the unnecessary data that can cloud the overall picture when you're trying to look at too much at one time. Depending on how you decide to design your dashboard, even straightforward numerical data can be visually informative by utilizing you intuitive symbols such as red triangle facing down to indicate a drop in revenue or green triangle facing up to indicate an increase in website traffic. So we're going to see as we build our dashboard that color is a big factor in our message that we are sending. So you'll see today that we're doing a profit dashboard and we will specifically be changing our colors to green and red so that green we see as good, go, successful, and red we usually see as stop or bad or deficit. And so color can definitely enhance a person's visualization. Now, these last couple slides are all from this particular source. I wanted to make sure you knew where I got this from. So dashboard examples, I just pulled these off the internet. They're a little fuzzy because the picture quality wasn't great from the internet, but you can get the idea. Notice that there's multiple visualizations. Um, ours is also gonna have filters to help our interactiveness in our dashboard. Also notice in these examples, the color schemes. From graph to graph, the color schemes are the same. There's no variation, which helps with the overall look of the dashboard. Um, if you're using different colors for different graphs, like let's say we have purple and green here, blue and green here, uh, black and white, and then red and yellow, uh, that can be really distracting for the reader because then they don't know what they're looking at when you have a common theme. It is much easier to recognize that the color has a, um, a specific purpose. So we'll know that when we see light green, it's one specific category versus dark blue is another, and it's consistent throughout the dashboard. And that's really helpful for your readers to make the connection between the graphs. So one thing you need to make sure you're aware of is these graphs are not disjointed. They are to work together to build a story to tell an entire picture tied together. So that's why color scheming is really important to tell the story. So some top tips that we want to make sure that we um, pay attention to as we build our dashboard. Very first top tip is to know your audience. Okay, you need to know who you are talking to because you're building a dashboard for them. And what is important to them needs to be a key point on your dashboard. The size and the layout is really important. So we are going to play around with that as well as we build our dashboard. We need to make sure our size is appropriate for the device that this dashboard will be displayed on. And we also want to make sure that the layout of the graphs that we pick is readable and makes sense and um, is easy to, to comprehend, to, to take in visually. We talked about color choice. Okay, views has everything to do with how the graphs are displayed. We want to make sure our graphs are displayed in a easy to read manner and that all of the data that we're using is labeled or somehow um, you can figure out what the data is fairly easily for the reader. And we always wanna make our dashboards interactive. 
Hey, just looking at a flat PDF graph, great, but that's great for one day, for one view rather, and then tomorrow that graph is old and <laughs> there's there's nothing nothing else that graph can give me but the stagnant one view so we're going to learn today how to make our dashboards interactive so that our our audience is getting the most out of our work and out of our data so when we complete today we i will show you how to save your dashboard as a workbook in tableau and you can also export it as a powerpoint Okay, it comes with a power um, a, um, cover page as this one. This is exactly what it looks like when it exported. And this is the dashboard we are going to build today. All right, so let's get started with building. So let me stop, let me share my Tableau screen. Here we go. Okay, so now we are in Tableau. This is what it should look like. This is the dashboard we are going to build. So I'm not gonna click in there because we're gonna start from scratch. Um, so I am actually going to use one of the um, sample sources here instead of uploading my own data file. So I'm gonna use this sample superstore. So I'm just gonna click on that. Okay. So if I wanted to take a look at my data, I can click data source down here at the bottom left. And I can take a look at the different types of um, variables that I'm given. So maybe I can get a better idea of what questions I can answer. Because remember, we talked about this, that you may have questions you want answered, but it doesn't mean the data is going to have what you need in order to answer it. So here I get an idea about what type of data is in this data set, and then I can proceed to trying to make my dashboard. So I'm clicking down here on sheet one. I'm gonna rename this sheet. I'm gonna make this sheet um, profit by category. So let's rename profit by category. Okay, and I'm going to go here to product and click this down arrow so I can see everything listed under product. And I want to use category, so I'm going to click and drag category to rows. And I'm also going to do the same for subcategory, so I'm going to click and drag subcategory over here to rows. And then I want to show everything is about profit in this dashboard so i'm going to take my profit and i want the profit to be displayed so see how it says abc and when i drag profit over this it creates that rectangle that's how i know the profit's going to drop right into that abc part and we can see now that the profit numbers are here now, this isn't pretty to look at. We want it to be a nice graph. So we're gonna come over here to show me. And it's already telling me this would be the best graph for you to use. So we're going to select its recommendation. Close this menu by clicking show me again. So now I have a nice visualization for profit by category. And I want to select, um, I want these, profits to be colored. So in order for me to make the profits colored, if you're on a PC, hold down your control button. If you're on a Mac, hold down your command button. So I'm holding my command button and then I'm gonna click and drag profit over the color box. Again, I clicked my command button. If you're on a PC, a Windows computer, make sure to hold down the control, then click and drag over color. So now my profit is by color. I can see this little legend here on the right that shows me orange is going into deficit while dark blue is going into profit colors. But blue and orange is not the best colors for displaying what is good versus bad. So if we click on the color button over here and we click edit colors, then we can change it from its automatic selection to something else that we'd like. Now, as I said earlier in this video, I think that red and green are best for discerning between deficit 
and profits. So if we use red to green, the red will be used for deficits and the green will then be applied to your profits. The other thing that we want to make sure when we're using things like profit money is that we make sure that the center has been chosen at zero so that the difference between the green and the red really is deficit versus profits. So um, what I did was I clicked the advanced button and then just selected center, it's defaulted at zero. So I'm gonna apply these changes and click okay. So now we're looking at our first visualization and I can see that my deficits are in a reddish color, it looks more peach to me, and my greens are in are my profits and I can easily see by category and subcategory uh, what I'm looking at. So it looks like tables has the biggest deficit. And there's bookcases and supplies, which is very general, but that's under office supplies. So who knows what that is? And it seems like the most profitable by category is copiers. Okay, and it makes sense. Technology is more profitable, they're more expensive. Notice again, if I hover over, I get very specifics on numbers as well. All right, let's do another visualization because the first thing that we do to build our dashboard is build all the visualizations first, and then we put them all together onto a dashboard. So if you come down here by this profit by category that we labeled, right to the right, if we hover our mouse, we see that it says new worksheet. So let's click that. I'm going to build another visualization. Let's rename this worksheet profit by state. So now I'm gonna come over here to location and click this down arrow. And I'm going to select state and drag it to the open space. Okay. Give it a minute. Okay, here's my map. So now that I'm looking at my map, I then want to do my by state by profit. So I'm going to select my profit and drag it over the map. Now I want my profit to be colored. So I am going to take this profit right now. It's being, um, the profit is being shown by the size of the, the bubble. So you see this little med legend, it's doing a bubble. So we can see higher profits versus lower profits on bubble. But remember, this is going on a dashboard. And since our first visualization was discerned, the profit and the deficit was done by color, we want to do the same thing. So I'm going to click and drag profit over to the color button. Okay. Again, it starts with the default color. So we're going to have to do the same thing in edit. So I am going to go to color and edit color. Again, we're coming over here to this drop down and we're selecting red to green diverging. And again, make sure the center is centered at zero. We hit advanced and select the center box, which is defaulted at zero. So now I can see that dark green is highly profitable states versus a darker red are the deficit states. Okay, so this is good for this one. So now let's do our third visualization. So let's open one more tab and let's rename that tab to profit by manufacturer. And for this one, let's go to product and let's take manufacturer and bring it over to the columns. Notice again, there's ABC here saying you don't know what data value you want to demonstrate by manufacturer. So we need to tell it that we want profits. So we're gonna come down here and grab the profit variable. And again, you wanna hover it, careful, if you do this, it's gonna come out wrong. Notice that dotted line. You wanna hover it until you see that rectangle. It's uh, highlighting the area in which you're dropping the profit and I want it in the ABC. So now I drop it and you can see that the profits are here. 
Again, we need a visualization for this. We don't want these numbers. That's not fun to read. So I'm going to go to the show me. And I'm going to select again the bar graph. But this time, again, I'm going to unselect the show me so it's out of my way. This time I actually don't want them to be um, a horizontal graph. I want it to be vertical. So we can flip this bar graph to the horizontal axis by coming up here. You see this button here where it has these little boxes and an arrow. You can even see when you hover your mouse, it says swap rows and columns. So I'm going to select that. And I find that this is better with the manufacturers down at the bottom and my profits um, being vertical. So when I look at this graph, I notice that I have to scroll. And for dashboards, scrolling graphs are not great. You want the visual to be very clear. So the way to change that is to come up top where it says standard and select entire view. Okay, so now I can see everything all at once, which makes it easier for me to pinpoint the manufacturers that are doing really well. Okay, here. And the ones that are in poor deficit. Okay. Now, again, we're going to want to, we're going to want to do profit by color so it's consistent. So again, hold down your command if you're on a Mac or control if you're on a Windows computer and then click and drag the profit into the color box. And once again, let's edit the colors so our dashboard is consistent to the red green diverging, advanced, and select center. Apply. Okay. So now we have red down underneath and green above where the profits median line is at zero. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to do? Okay, so we want to fix this a little bit to um, a sending order. So if I go up to manufacturer and I am going to select or click this down arrow and then I'm going to go to sort. So I want it to be ascending, so smallest to largest or deficit to profit. And we want this to be by field. Okay, we want it to be by profit. Okay, so right now I'm selecting field and the field name should be profit by default. And you can see the graph changing where now all the profits are grouped on the right side and the deficits are on the left side. So that makes it easier for a reader to take a look at the extreme of profits and the extreme of deficits a lot easier. Now, this is a quite a stretch of a graph. I still see that there's, you know, a lot of uninteresting data in the center. And depending on what your audience is more important to, whether they're more focused on where can we improve, let's look at these deficits, or are they focused on where are we doing well, um, you can alter or zoom in, so to speak, in these graphs in order to highlight just what you want to focus on. So. Let's say that we want to focus on the deficits so that a company has the opportunity to see where their deficits are and be able to then maybe make some changes in order to better their company. So if we come back up here to manufacturer and we go to filter and we click over here at top, we are going to filter by field. And because we want to look at the deficits, let's select bottom and let's change this to the bottom 30. So our graph will only be showing the bottom 30 using profit. This is already selected, so keep that. Apply. Okay. So now you see that the graph is much more user friendly because now I'm looking at a a much easier to read graph and it's focused on the bottom 30 companies for deficit 
Um, what if we also want to make a comparison between the quantity sold and these profits or deficits here? So in order to add quantity as a factor to my graph, I am going to drag quantity to rows. Now I want them to be, this looks funny because this is the bottom and this is a top, it looks like a top. So let's switch the order so that the graph is a bit more pleasing. So if we take quantity and just move it over here so that it's in front of profit, oh, shoot. Let's undo, undo button. It's always good to know where the undo button is. So that's that left arrow here. I didn't want to erase the profit. I wanted to just move it. So there you go. You see that little orange arrow? I was missing that before. That shows me where it's going to go. Ah, better. So this looks a lot better for me because I feel like now it's easier to compare. So we're looking at a deficit and we're seeing, oh, there was only 13 sold. Um, so there's a story there versus here we have a small deficit and there's 310 of these, um, uh, the manufacturers that sold the product. Okay, uh, let's see, let's um, remove the color from quantity because our color is really focused on profit. So we don't want the color to be um, confusing and by quantity being in the same color, that's confusing when you're trying to represent profit by color. So we're gonna come over here to quantity and I am just going to, I just hit the down arrow, um, which gives me this, this menu based on um, quantity. What happened to my quantity? We should be able to drag this off. Okay. So I selected the down arrow in quantity and then took the little bubble and just dragged it off into this gray space, which then removed the color from quantity. And gray is fine for me. Um, it just makes sure that people are really relating the color to the profit and nothing else. Okay, now that we have our three visualizations based on, again, these are chosen for the company, let's say. For you guys, you're gonna be choosing metrics that are based on what you're trying to tell in your data journalism piece. Now we're ready to build our dashboard. So if you come down over here, and this is the new worksheet tab, we don't want another worksheet, we want a new dashboard. So we're gonna select this middle button down here, and it opens up our brand new dashboard. And first things that we want to do to our dashboard is to select the size. So remember one of the top tips was making sure that the size of your dashboard is um, compatible to the where it's going to be displayed. So if you click this down arrow, you'll see that you have quite a few options. Okay, so I click the down arrow and then I click the down arrow again by desktop browser. So if you know that you're going to be using a laptop, if you know that you'll be using a PowerPoint, if you know that you'll be on a mobile device, um, that's another thing that you have to consider. Um, and I'm not exactly sure which ones go to which yet. I'd have to look these up. But um, from what I've seen, using the generic desktop is a good option because that fits most desktop displays. So if you're using a computer to display this, which is what we'll be doing, just select generic desktop so it refits to fit most desktop screens. Now, the other thing that I wanna show you is down here, how do you want to build your dashboard? Floating means that if I take one of my visualizations and place it in here, um, I have free, free movement to move it wherever I want, to resize it however I want, and that's really, I think that's really for more advanced dashboard creators because you are really have to know what you're doing in order to make it not look crazy. So I don't suggest that you guys use the floating, although I won't say you can't. I'm just going to tell you to be careful because remember the view, the way you design your dashboard is all part of it being user friendly 
and easy for someone to understand the information being shown. So I strongly recommend since we're beginners to keep it on tiled, which means that it will give you limited options on where to place your visualizations. All right, let's start with the profit by category. Let's take profit by category, click and drag. Notice that the space here turns gray, so it's showing me it's gonna fill the space. So we have our profit by category here. It's a little big for this screen, but that's okay. Notice that we have a little legend here. Um, this legend we don't need. It's very obvious that we're working with profit. So if you single click this legend and then you can click the X, which will remove the legend from your dashboard. Okay. Let's see, what else do we wanna do? So I want, I noticed that there is a little, you see how this ends up here and there's all this wasted white space. So again, we're going to, after you click on your visualization, you'll see standard is here as the view. We've changed this view before. We wanna select entire view so that we can see the whole thing and use up all our space. Now, the reason why I have sliders is because my screen is a laptop, so it's not fitting to my laptop. And when I have this up on my second monitor screen, it fills the whole screen. So um, it's designed to fill a, a desktop computer screen. Um, and so laptops, it's a little squishy. Or I just have to use my bars to slide around. Okay, now let's grab profit by state. Notice that when I hover over, it tells me all the different options of where I can put it, top, bottom, or to the right. I'm gonna drop it on the right gray box so that it's on the right side. And here's my profit by state. Um, let's remove the legend as well. So again, let's single click on the legend and click the X. Make sure you click the legend because the original X is actually for your visualization, which is fine if you delete it by accident, you just redrag it back onto the dashboard. Um, let's see. Now let's take manufacturer and let's place it on the bottom right. Okay, so I wait till the gray box looks how I want it and I drop. Again, select the legend. We don't need a legend saying that this is profit. It's very obviously profit. Okay, so now I have a dashboard that has all of my visualizations on it. Again, you can't see this as a whole because I'm using my laptop screen. I probably should have used my second monitor, but that's okay. You guys will see it when you're practicing. Um, let's see. Now let's work on making this interactive. So if we click on profit by category and we click on this little filter, actual filter icon, then what happens now is when I click on this bar, it changes all of the other pictures to, um, to, to just focus on the deficit of tables. So it highlights what states are most are in the most deficit, ooh, actually New York and Illinois. And, ooh, I'm zooming in and out here. Uh, and then in the manufacturer uh, visualization, it's also showing you which manufacturer is in the highest deficit for tables. So now that this is set as the filter, clicking any one of the other visualizations is not going to change them all. We want all of them to be interactive. So let's do that for all of them. So if I select, oh, I should probably mention, if you select something like tables and then you want it to go back to normal, you just select it again and the visualization goes back to normal. It unselects. All right, let's, let's actually put on the filter for all of them. So here I'm gonna select this filter. And for manufacturer, same thing. Again, that makes each map interactive with all visualizations. So everywhere I click, it will update all of the other visualizations. The other thing that we want to do is we want to go to our category graph again. And we're going to want to filter, create filters 
so that our audience can look at very specific things. So if I come down to, again, I selected the graph first, and then I come down below the filter icon to more options. I am going to go to filters, and I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna allow my audience to filter by category. So you notice a filter shows up here where we're allowed to select or deselect things. I'm gonna to add to the filter um, for subcategories as well. And then I also want to add two other things. I want to add region and order date. So if I'm in my profit by state, I'll see that under filters, that's not an option because I did not use region or order date when I was creating these visualizations. But we can add them just to the filter categories. So select your profit by state. Come over here to this go to sheet button. Brings us back to our worksheet, or we could have just selected down here. Notice this box says, okay, we got categories in the filter, but you can add other measures for the audience to filter and play with your dashboard. So we are going to come over here and grab region. Let's find region listed somewhere. Region, region, region. I know it's here. Oh, here it is. All right, so I'm going to take region and I'm going to drag it to the filter box. It's gonna ask me, well, what region do you want? Well, we want to use all of them so that the audience can select which one they're interested in. So we're gonna say, okay. Next, I want to use order date, okay? Because in your audience, most likely, um, this covers quite a few years. And what if your audience only wants to pay attention to this year? So you wanna give them the option to change the date. So we're gonna select order date and drag that into my filter box. Um, I'm going to say, we can select anything that you think your audience would be more interested in. For profits, I'm gonna do it by year. And I'm gonna use all the years so that they can select which year they're interested in. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our dashboard. So down here at the bottom, I'm going down to the dashboard. While we're down here, we might as well rename it to what we want. So I'm gonna rename this to Profit Dashboard. Actually, I already have it. Oh, you know what, I just won't save this one. Profit Dashboard. Um, and again, to practice, you guys should really use this. This is why I'm using an already uploaded sample data so that you guys can build this dashboard yourself and get the practice because your assignment is to do one of these, but using um, probably the same data you used for your visualization in the uh, beginning of the first month of this course. Um, but this is a good data set for you to practice on. And it's off limits for the assignment of building a dashboard. So you may not use this data set, this sample superstore for your dashboard, or you'll get zero credit. Okay, so now we want to play around with these filters. Oh, we gotta add those filters. So let's come here um, and go to filters and, oop, filters and add region to our filter list and order date. So filters, year of order date. Okay, so now I have all of these filters listed here, but when we look at them, you have to admit this is a lot to look at. Um, it's like looking at a shopping website and they're like, how would you like to filter your views? And you're like, oh, overwhelming. There's too much stuff to click on. So we can reorganize these filters so that it's more user friendly. So let's first take the, um, the order filter and make that first. So we're gonna pick their year first. So if we single click, and then you see if you hover your mouse over this double line, it gives you the moving arrow. Be careful when you move this. I sometimes mess up when I move it, and it, it gets a little weird. So hold on, with the Mac, it's a little bit weird to move this thing, so I have to scroll. Scrolling. Okay, so I want it, ooh, see, gotta be careful. Oh, all right. Just want single gray, so it just moves to the top. 
Again, if you make a mistake and it turns out to be this big box, which I've done a million times, just hit your back button and try again. So I want the order to be on top because I feel like people are gonna want to select their year, but I don't want it to be a selection box. So I'm gonna hit this little filter or actually, hold on, let me hit this little down arrow. And in this down arrow, let's select single value slider. Let's make it a slider. So now um, they can just slide and select the year that way. Okay, so if they wanna specify a year or if they wanna go back to all. So that makes, this cleans up the filter so that it's uh, more visually pleasing. Um, let's then put region next. Okay, again, you are trying to create a user experience. So whatever you think makes most sense for your users, people normally read top down. So if you think it makes sense for them to pick the year and then the region and then focus on categories, which is what I think makes sense, then you want to create that user experience. You are in charge of your user experience. Now for region, let's see. I want region to be um a single value list so let's do a single value list so now notice the difference is that they can't select more than one at the same time they can either do all or a single region also notice the map demonstrates the regions you're selecting okay i like that i think that looks nice and neat um, let's see, let's change subcategory is a bit overwhelmed. Category is fine, but subcategory, you guys hopefully agree. This is a lot. It's a long list. Again, we want to really customize the user's experience. So let's change this subcategory to multiple value dropdown, multiple value dropdown. Because now, again, you're not looking at all the categories at once. It's a drop down menu to select, and that's better. Okay, now the only thing about the filters that I need to focus on is the fact that the filters. And do that. Sorry, I clicked something. Um, the filters are only applying to the graph that they came from. So notice when I picked order, date, and region, they only apply to this graph because that's the graph that I selected the filter from. So in order for your filters to apply to your entire dashboard, which is really what you want, again, click this down arrow, go to apply to worksheets, and do all using related data sources. So that when you then change something here, like the year, every single one of your visualizations are changing and representing the same thing. So you're gonna have to do that for each one of these. So here, select down, apply to all sources, select here, down, apply to worksheet, apply to all data sources. And let's do that for subcategory as well. Okay, now whenever I change something, it will apply to every single one of my data sources, um, the whole dashboard, all the visualizations. All right, let me make sure, let's see, did that. Let's see, anything else we wanna do before we export this? Oh, yes. Okay, the other thing is, is you wanna control what your, your audience is able to select because it's not true that all of these are applicable to um, when you select a certain year, certain categories might not be applicable to that year. So we wanna make sure any, everything relevant is being showed. So if you again, click more options, there's an option to say only relevant values and that will limit what your user can select when in customized spaces. And it reduces the frustration of your users because they're restricted to only categories or options that pertain to that year or that region. Okay, 
So I've gone to all four filters drop down menu and selected only relevant values in order to limit the users um, what they can see based on what they want to see. All right, so what we have left now is to add a title. So I come over here to my objects down here and I'm gonna select the text and drag it to the top. Hopefully I dragged it to the right area. It seems like it turned into the gray box that was um, horizontal at the top, but let's type uh, profit dashboard. And let's highlight, let's make it nice and big. I'm select 24 and bold. I'm going to click OK. OK, it comes out really big at first, but you can customize this. So if I just go to the bottom, you see this little double arrow. And I'm going to move that up so that it's more of a title. And now I have to decide whether I really want these individual titles because it is fairly obvious what's in here. This is category and we know this is profit. This is states and we know it's profit. This is gonna say manufacturer and we know it's profit. So I don't think these individual these individual titles are needed. In fact, they're just extra. So if I right click, I can select hide title. I'm gonna do that for all of them. Yay. Okay, so now I have myself a dashboard where I can save as a worksheet, save as, I'll save as a worksheet, or I can export as a PowerPoint, which will look like what I showed you um, in the PowerPoint that I was using in the beginning of this video. So now again, I have a dashboard. It's interactive based on where I click, so I can click I'm focused on tables and the rest of the visualizations highlight what is important to tables. I can change the region. I can change the year. I can change the categories and subcategories as well. Okay. So this is how you create a dashboard. And I hope that this was interesting and informative. Remember this video, if it went too fast, that's what's great about recordings. You can pause and follow step-by-step -step through this video to create your first dashboard.